Welcome everybody. I think you can already hear me, but probably you don't see me because the camera does not work. Let me see. Now you can see me. Is it correct? Yes. I see myself on the monitor, so uh, you should see me as well. So welcome to this short afternoon session. I was informed yesterday that at four o'clock there's a lecture here and I had to move, so we will do it at three o'clock now and we will just do 45 minutes, but I hope that I can show you at least the main idea how to prove the smoothness. And I have to confess something. I was talking also, the next thing will be to prove that we have stable curves as the fibers of our projection map. And I knew that the proof we had was not complete. So I was thinking about it last week, and it didn't work out, didn't work out. And then I thought, oh, until the lecture, I will finish, hopefully, the proof. And indeed, I think we have now a proof. Of course, the details have to be filled in. But at least the ideas are there, and I will present them next time, because we don't have time today. Today, we will just focus on the smoothness. So let me already start with what we want to do. So the theorem was our moduli space Yn is smooth. And <clears throat> the proof, I already indicated the main construction, but I will repeat them. So <clears throat> take x in Yn an extremal string. which means only entries 0, 1, infinity with extremal tree gamma x. And this means all inner vertices have degree 3. And then we consider the set of quadruples. I think I called it maybe m1x. These were the quadruples q in n4, such that the cross ratio. Now, as x is extremal, it will have only three possible cross ratios, 0, 1, and infinity. And we take one third of the quadruples, namely those for which the cross ratio is 1. Of course, we could equally take 0 or infinity, but it doesn't matter. Okay, And then we define open neighborhood ux of x in yn and <clears throat> y belongs to ux if and only the cross ratio of y with respect to some for all q in m1 of x is not 0 or infinity. So it's just either it is 1 or it is non-special, either equal to 1 or a non-special. Recall that special means being 0, 1, or infinity. This is an open neighborhood. And then we define the map. So we expect this to have dimension n minus 3. n minus 3. So we want to define a chart map. Chart map which goes as follows, alpha from ux to, now we go directly to k, actually it will go to k star n minus 3. And how does this work? If we take here y, we send it to a vector of cross ratios, now q y, and here I write q e, 
E edge of gamma x. So let me draw this extremal tree. So I will do it, if you allow me to simplify my notation, I will restrict to n equals 5. Here you will be able to see all the ingredients. And taking an arbitrary n is just a little bit technically more complicated, but it's the same, completely the same ideas. So how does a, an extremal string for n equals 5 look like? So we have two inner edges, which I want to call e and f. And then we have five leaves. And I want to call them i, j, k, l, and m. m plays a special role, because it's in the middle. OK? <clears throat> so and. Sorry, this is an I. Here. This was an I. So how do we de choose this QE and QF? So if we delete E, and we delete e and the two endpoints. Then let me draw this like this. And then we just get in blue something like this. f will persist. e has disappeared. And then as we deleted also this vertex here, this will be disconnected. Here we will have uh, i, j. M, K, L. And we see that we have four connected components. This one, this one, this one, and all this. So the QE will be just picking one in each component. So it will be I, J. That's kind of clear because they are unique. But here, we have a choice, either take L or K. And if we assume that K is less than L, then we take the smaller one. So whenever you have an ambiguity, you take the minimal one just to make it unique, and then we have M. Okay. So this is the first entry here. We will have just two entries in the map alpha. N minus 3 is, N minus, is 5 minus 3 is 2. And the other. The other situation is when we delete this one. Of course, the, the situation is symmetric. I, J, and then here we have again M, L, and K. So in this case, the QF. Uf will be uh, in the right order, k, l, i, m. So I also assume that i is less than j, and it takes the minimal. Okay. So that's the chart map. We take, there's a certain procedure to take these quadruples, and we take the cross ratio of y. And the claim is, claim that alpha is injective. What is clear it is that it is rational and that it is well defined. So uh, we just have to prove that this is an injective. And this will imply that ux is isomorphic to some vx in k star n minus 3 open. And this then proves that ux is 
smooth. Hence, ux is smooth. But we, as we have a covering of yn by all these ux, we get yn smooth. OK? I already discussed this to some detail earlier. OK? So the main part is to prove that alpha is injective. So injective means that we can really construct the string y from these two cross ratios. So let me write it again. Alpha of y will be just the cross ratio of y with respect to qe and the cross ratio of y with respect to qf. OK. Excuse me. <coughs> OK. So <clears throat> let me recall this ux. Can you still read here? Yes. The ux is sitting inside p1 n times n over 3. So it has a string here, y, has many, many entries, has many entries. So to prove injectivity means to reconstruct from two numbers, from these two numbers, all entries of y. Okay, that's quite a challenge, but but now we will simplify a little bit. So y, recall, is a string of n gons t in n two three. A string of n gons. And we have a certain convention, namely that if t is a triple, so if t is i, j, k, this has nothing to do here with the special situation. If t is i, j, k, then y, t, i, the first one was 0, y, t, j was 1, and y, t, k was infinity. So now we are interested in reconstructing the other entries of y. So y t l, let l be another label, OK? Now y t l is one of these entries, but we can express it as a cross ratio with respect to i, j, k, l is, uh, so it is not directly the cross ratio, but it is a function. Maybe I write this g of the cross ratio. If you take precisely i, j, k, l of y, just this single one, then this entry y, t, l, I think it is the inverse of 1 minus this cross ratio. Okay. So this means any L for all L different i, j, k. This means that instead of reconstructing the entries of a string y in order to prove that alpha is injective, we just have to reconstruct all cross ratios of y. Okay, So let me write this down. Let me repeat. In order to prove that our chart map alpha is injective, we just have to prove that our two 
selected cross ratios allow us to express all other cross ratios as rational functions. Let me write this down. Sufficient for the proof of the claim for all Q quadruple in N cross Q Y is a rational function in the two selected ones in cross Q E of Y and cross Q F of Y. But there's a small caveat. I write here y, so these functions, in order to invert alpha, they have to be defined. Yeah. So all functions have to be defined. Now, as we go back, where do we have it? Here. We go from ux to an image v of x. They have to be defined on v of x. Now we want to invert on vx, which is alpha of ux. OK, so we have two things to do. And uh, maybe I write this again. I see that my pen is fading out. Let me see if I have a better one. Maybe I can try this one. So you see, when we have five. When we have five labels, n equals five, we have many quadruples. Yeah? So I, of course, the perm a permutation of the entries of a quadruple does not matter because the cross ratio will just go to the inverse or one minus the cross ratio and so on. So we have to consider quadruples just up to permutation. Suffices to choose Q up to permutation. And what I will do today is just show you how to do one case, maybe then a second one. So uh, ba, 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 bam, where do I have my Q? Hold on a second. Yeah. Let me start with one. Let us start just to illustrate with q equals i, j, k, l. Again, we are in the case n equals 5. So i, j, k, l, we uh, omit m. So let me write, let us write, as usual, ijkl in z1 up to zn for the cross ratio. For the cross ratio, as now I don't, the zi are variables, as a rational function in variables z1 up to zn. 
if I work with two variables, I don't have to worry about the domain of definition. So what I will do first, I will take this cross ratio as a function. I will also take these two here as rational functions. I will express this one in terms of these two. And then I will show that this is well defined on Vx. Okay. So this here would then, as a abstractly, we want to compare this cross ratio and this with this one. <clears throat> so I claim the following. Uh, we show. Now, the proof is a little bit disappointing because it's so easy. We show that if we take 1 minus ijkl, so this cross ratio, then this will be expressed in these two, just the product 1 minus. The first one here was ijkm. And the second one is 1 minus KLIM. So that's the first step. So then we will express this cross ratio in terms of the selected ones. And afterwards, we have to show that this is well defined. But this is easy. This is easy. Because we have the triple product formula. Triple product formula. Let me write it like this. Now I have to permute a little bit the entries. I, K, Jm times I K M L I K L J is one. This is the basic and the only identity which is not completely obvious for cross ratios. So how is the rule here? You Fix the first three entries, the first two entries, and then in the last two, you make a cyclic permutation of J, M, L. No? J, M, M, L, and L, J. It's easy to remember because M has to be one of the fourth place and one of the third place, and so on. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you we bring this to the other side, so if we divide here, then we have to invert j and l. So this implies ik jl is ik lj inverse is ik jm times ik ml. We are not there yet but almost. So when you permute the entries of a quadruple, there are precise rules how the cross ratio will change. And you have to take a little bit of care to do this correctly. I never remember the rules, but I have written them down. So for instance, now I want to, I want in this formula, I want to exchange j with k because I want to express i, j, k, l. So if you change the middle two, if you permute the middle two, yeah, uh, swapping second and third entry, move C 
to 1 minus c. c is the cross ratio. So we get, hence, we are done. 1 minus ijkl equals the product as we wanted, 1 minus ijkm times 1 minus klim. That's certainly a rational function in these two. These are the selected ones. Okay, But that's not the whole story. So this would be now 1 minus q if I dare to write it like this. And this would be 1 minus qe times 1 minus qf. Now I just write the quadruples in brackets. So that's inside this function field. Of course, that's very simple, the formula, but it works. So <clears throat> we have to. Sorry. Um, yes. Question. Um, because we have the we have the I K J L equals I K J M, and then we have I K M L. Now you said we we switch K and J to get the one minus. Here, yes, and yeah. here. Um, and then, so the first term, I, I understand that. But for the second term, wouldn't we need to switch the k for a j? And then we don't, we can't get k l i m. So I'm a bit confused as to why we have k in both terms. Here we want i k m l, and I have k l i m. But if we Yes, here is something wrong. But didn't good? we switch the k's and the j's that we have to apply to the other side? No, no, no. Here? What I switch is I switch the middle two. I thought we, we, we switched the middle two on the left hand side, so k and j. And um, now you then to get the one minus, we switch the. We also switch on the right hand side, and I just. J, K, yeah, something is not OK here. It's I'm, not OK. I'm just a bit confused as to why we get this result. I mean, maybe it's not that important. I don't know, but uh, I'm just confused. I am K, L, I am. Yeah, I made a mistake, of course. Thank you. Chiara, you are wonderful. Sorry, please correct here. Uh, pa -pum. So this is still correct here. Now, let me see. I, I permute the middle two. I get jk. Here I get ijkm. And here I get im, imkl. That's what we mean here. Now, this will be a mess. One minus, let me check again, I M K L. Do you agree? Yes. OK, but this I M K L is the same as KLIM. That's easy to see. If you exchange the first two with the last two, you get the same. So this is 1 minus QF. I, KLIM was the one we had here. Thank you. That was a mistake. But I hope, I think it's correct now, but please check it again. OK, <clears throat> so this was just uh, formally for the rational functions. Now we look on ux. And uh, uh, domain of definition. So we, I take the same qijkl. So 
if you look at cross q of x, you will see this is 1, which implies that our q i j k l belongs to this set of quadruples of, of x. And then, hence, <clears throat> now I write cross q of y to indicate that this is not now the evaluation of my abstract cross ratio on y <coughs> will be different 0 infinity, <coughs> sorry, on ux. By definition of ux, nothing deep behind. So if we look at this one here, <coughs> the formula above gives cross q of y equals 1 minus 1 cross qe of y, 1 minus cross qf of y. <coughs> And this one is different from 0 and infinity. <coughs> so this shows that this whole expression is also different from 0 and infinity. OK? Why? in ux. So this is an inequality defining, now this is just here in terms of z2 cross ratios, which are the image of alpha. So this here is now the inequality, one inequality v of x has to satisfy. Yeah. We want to construct the image <coughs> of alpha, and this will be this open set V of x. Yeah. Yeah. So if you write this differently, hence, let me simplify a little bit. If we just take 1 minus cross qy, 1 minus cross q e f of y, this will be then different as we have deleted the 1. This will be different from 0 and infinity. <clears throat> and uh, sorry, sorry, not 0, 1. 1 and infinity. We had 0 and infinity here. I subtracted the 1. So these two conditions are kind of separate because not being equal to infinity is obvious because these cross ratios are not equal to infinity. So <clears throat> we get uh, we get the condition. So this is uh, I just put it in bracket because it's automatic. We just get that this is different one as a condition. for this set v of x. Okay. So this showed for this chosen quadruple q, i, j, k, l. Now, for the other quadruples, it's a little bit more complicated. I will just indicate to you briefly that the same 
thing works, but it's getting a little bit more complicated. But you always use the triple product formula to express the cross ratios in terms of the two selected ones. So let me just to illustrate a little bit, take now, maybe we call it Q prime, we take another one, IJLM, and express cross ratio IJLM. And now we have more flexibility in terms of QE, QF, but we can also use Q because Q was already an expression. Yeah. So this simplifies a little bit the formulas. And by computation, gives, I don't do it. I always make errors, so I hope it is OK. So I already eliminate Q itself, and we get Q prime cross ratio is cross ratio QE plus cross ratio QF minus 1 divided by QF. OK. And this is well defined on Vx, which we have to show. Sorry, on Vx. And uh, the last one, last quadruple, we just have one more up to permutation, Q double prime, which is pop, pop, pop. Where do I have it? Oh, I don't have it. Yeah, no, I have it. J, M, K, L up to permutation. And then uh, find this expression exercise. Find expression for. It's not very difficult. It's a little computation, and it's quite instructive. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> I tried also to do the case n equals six. But then you have, uh, you have many more uh, cases to distinguish. Of course, you can do it by induction, but I don't want to indicate this here. I want to give you one more ingredient. Uh, I want to see a little bit what are the phylogenetic trees. In case n equals 6, because we will uh, n equals 4, yeah. So we have two extremal ones. Now we have three edges. And uh, this one, these are the extremal ones. And uh, the leaves are distributed like this. So this one has a famous name. Joseph called this Ribisl, which I like. So Ribisl in English, I don't know what Ribisl means. Uh, cranberry or something like this. So if you look at the fruit, not at the fruits, but at the ramification of these small trees, then it looks very much like this extremal tree. And now you get many, many uh, degenerations. So now if you start to contract edges, here you have EFG, 
E F G. And uh, this one may go to something like this. So either you just keep one in the middle and you get three here, or you get two, two, two. So this is what we call the contraction of edges. And then we can go on. From this one, we can go in the two directions. So you see the combinatorics is uh, quite funny. One, two, three, four, or three and three. And here, uh, pop -pom. you can only go to this one, up to symmetry, of course. You have four here and two leaves here. And then all these come together to the generic tree, which has just one vertex and six leaves. OK. So these are the trees of uh, strings y in ux. Yeah. Gamma y, y in ux. And this here would be a gamma x, and this is also gamma x. Two possible extremal trees. And here, to finish, you can go like this. And then you end up again. So it's a funny game. It's not very, very difficult. I hope I do all the cases. It's always contraction of edges. And then we get six. OK. Another question? Yes. Maybe? Um, because um, I noticed that for the leaders of tree, we get the, the same pattern as we do for the, so, so that's the same pattern as it is for the lower path for the extreme tree above it, right? I didn't catch it. What do you mean okay. here? So you have, if you have the, the upper version of the extreme tree. This one, the, yes, yes. Exactly. And then you go go down so now you have um here you have two part you have two possible paths so yeah it's mm -hmm. you take look at the lower one yes that is the same tree as it is for the the only possible path for the needle tree right the you only have three in a three in a vertices yes. and two leaves attached to each of them yes that's um, the same as this one exactly yeah yeah Okay, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I would have liked to know, I don't know if that's, uh, that's something that someone can answer, but yeah. um, is it if we look at higher ends, um, do these paths um, tend to coincide or do they rather tend to be completely different? So I would say they coincide because they will coincide at the very end. At some point, they're yeah. going to coincide yeah, yeah. At, the, yeah, yeah. at the generic tree. But, yeah. um, so Even maybe yeah. what my question would have been is if you have a high, if you have a high end, then um, is it, does it happen rather sooner? Or yeah. later. I'm Chiara, I'm very sorry. Similar I have no uh, no idea. One would have to to make a, write a program where you just do experiments. I think it would be nice to to experiment this a little bit, but I have no idea. Yeah, uh, I would say that they they converge more towards the end, but that's just a feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe yeah. something you can see in the so if you look at represent if you look at the trees um, which we use to uh, represent all kinds of uh, other concepts. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you do you see this um, coinciding behavior if no. you take up edges in the no, mathematics? No. 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 
Uh, I don't see. I would say that's just combinatorics or even arithmetics, yeah? But I don't, I have no feeling and no precise conjecture of anything, yeah? Uh, I just drew them for fun, more or less, yeah? No, sorry for not having more to say about this. Okay, <laughs> very good. So uh, I'm sorry that we have to stop already here. So we will continue next week on, on Wednesday at the usual time. I will send you an invitation. And then uh, I want to do this, this stable curve business. And I was, I was very impressed when I succeeded to see how it works. Of course, the details have to be checked. But it's really like magic. Yeah? Once you, you just have to look at these trees, and they give you all the answers. Yeah? And you know that it will work out. And you just have to look around, and then you see how it works. Yeah? So it's almost a meta mathematics. No? You don't produce your own proofs. The, the trees produce your proofs. And this I will try to communicate you next time. So thank you for today. Have a wonderful afternoon and wonderful week. And we keep in contact. Thank you for your interest. And bye-bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.